All right, so Farmer Joe is back. And again, we're going to talk about the movie industry and synergy and franchising. Now listen, uh, we know, right, if you look at the top box office um, numbers from last year, for 2019, number one, I believe seven of the ten top grossing films are Walt Disney Company films. Most of them being superhero films, most of them being sequels or part, part of, a, part of a, a franchise, right? So remakes uh, are, 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 you know, sequels and franchises are the simplest, easiest, lowest investment, lowest risk. Uh, and what I mean by low investment, I mean low risk investment um, in movies because there's a built-in audience. You know, with the new Star Wars movies, I'll go see those because I went and saw them as a kid, the originals as a kid, and I'll take my kid to see them, okay? Remix are some, some of the same thing. It's, it's like the Karate Kid where you have Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan, which is a, a, you know, a remake of the original, um, you know, whatever. Franchises like Star Wars or Ghostbusters is again where you have like a very recognized, or whatever, Avengers or Batman or Spider-Man, any of those things, right, where you have a franchise based around a character or a set of characters that you're, that you're able to exploit. Well, Matt and Trey go into this, and, I mean, they really rip on a lot of this stuff uh, because they think a lot of, you know, that, and we see this in Obama wins, right, where, like, the Chinese are trying to protect Star Wars from Disney, from Disney fucking it up. You know, which a lot of people say, hey, Disney's done a great job because they haven't made episodes like George Lucas did with one through three, which were total shit uh, and horrible. Um, you know, but the, the key here with franchising and, um, you know, uh, uh, sequels and remakes is that's low risk, right? Uh, proven formulas, characters we know, storylines we know, things we're familiar with. The marketing is easy, it's simple, it's easy to exploit our nostalgia etc. And, you know, they do an episode, which is, co- which is called uh, Band in China, and part of the, the again, the, the, the sub uh, plot is basically that Spielberg and George Lucas have, by making a new Indiana Jones movie, right, they use the equivalent, you know, of rape that they're essentially taking full advantage of the franchise. Now, if you've seen this episode, it also has a bunch of um, intertextual references to like the movie Deliverance and like movies that have, um, I don't wanna say iconic, but notable, known uh, rape scenes in them. But they use it to, you know, it as a way to, in their very own way. I mean, you can see the images of, uh, uh, you know, George Lucas and you know Spielberg taking their turns with a stormtrooper, um, etc., to signal like how they're exploiting these franchises, these known uh, commodities in the marketplace. So, film industry structure—it's a lot like, you know, what we saw in the music music industry so you have uh, studios these studios own they can own smaller uh, studios they you know can own, you know be a major own uh, a major film studio or a couple major film studios a couple smaller ones what, whatever it is so just like music group studios are now these studios own multiple production companies these production companies are com- tri- uh, composed of directors that work for them, that writers that work for them, animators, they create the content essentially for these studios. Uh, these studios will also own uh, distribution companies. These distribution companies, the same as in music, they're concerned with distributing content to uh, exhibit, uh, theaters, so exhibition, or to uh, securing licenses for streaming rights, uh, streaming exclusivity, um, and also for distributing, um, you know, DVDs to stores, etc. Uh, you have exhibition. Exhibition is never uh, owned by a film studio. So this goes back to, um, you know, uh, Thomas Edison and his 
cartel, the Edison Trust, um, which was which was basically they owned every every all the means of making film from the film sprockets and the cameras all the way to the projection technology, and it, you know they had a full monopoly on the industry. You're not allowed to have that. So most um, record labels do not own movie uh, the, well, can't own they say record labels most film studios cannot own um theaters but like i said it, early on that sumner red redstone who <coughs> is a major, majority shareholder of of viacom who's a majority shareholder of uh, cbs universal also in owns the private company national amusements and national amusements is one of the largest theater chains in the united states so Again, so how ownership works is a, is, a, is a weird thing when we're talking about publicly traded uh, corporations. You also have retail. So again, this is physical and, distri uh, physical and uh, digital. Uh, again, you can buy episodes of South Park on YouTube if you want to watch them or, or, or whatever. So they, you know, it's digital, uh, you know, retail, quote unquote. Um, and the tra trade association that represents the music industry, I mean, the recording, <laughs> the trade organization that represents the music. So what's we call a major brain fart right there. The trade organization that represents the movie industry is called the MPAA. The MPAA does a lot of the same things as the RIAA, like representing the interests of the recording industry, industry suing on behalf of the movie industry uh, in the studios, lobbying on behalf of the studios in Congress. The other uh, s function that they perform that's very different than the RIAA is that they rate films. They give films ratings. And this can have a drastic effect on your sales, on your box office numbers, because it will dictate who can and specifically who cannot. So if your film gets an R rating, it's going to be harder for you to get people in the seats versus if it gets a PG-13 rating. You know, if you say fuck one less time, you're rated PG-13. And then that opens you up to a whole you know larger demographic of consumers same with same with pg so they use more ratings as a form of censorship it also you know helps to sell um sell certain you know things as well obviously by granting access to younger audiences 